This is Breakfast Daily on CCTV. Thank you so much for staying with us. And as we do every Friday, we highlight a personality whose life we feel should be an exemplary life for all of us to learn from and live by. I have been joined by Honorable Gifty Chum Ampofo, who is the MP for Ebuakwa North and Deputy Minister for Gender, Children and hey, Social education. Protection. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. Deputy Minister for Education. Sorry about that. She's going to walk us through how life has been for her and uh, what we can learn from her journey so far. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning, Yvonne. I must apologize for that. That's okay. Please, I sorry. was <laughs> with the Ministry of Gender. And then they moved. And yeah. from March 1, President Bull moved to the Ministry of Education. Ah, okay. So as a Deputy Minister in charge of TVET. Thank you very much for that clarification. Now, we we'll want to learn about your life as a child. So uh, what did you do uh, in your childhood? Where did you grow up? What did you do for fun? Good. Thank you very much. A lot of appreciation to city management. Who is Gifty Chuban Bofo? A noble, humble, initially very quiet piece of gear, initially. My father has a lot of sons. But with my mother, I'm the only daughter. Wow. With two brothers. In growing up, I was a weak, feeble type. I'm a left-handed, and in class one, my teacher won't allow me to write with my left. And I was weak and feeble, so you could imagine the amount of strength in my right hand. So as late as class two, I was still using slate. Wow. Because I couldn't grip the crayon or the chalk or the pencil with my right. And he wouldn't agree. He was a strict Presbyterian and my mother's friend. So he thought he was doing me a lot of good. But still class two, I was writing slate. I remember very well. So class two, promotion exam. I remember I was 32nd. I remember very well. So when I go to class three, I met another teacher, teacher Gladys, thank God she's still alive. She was, she had just a son. So she was so caring. So she could motivate me to try, once I'm changing, I shouldn't reverse to the left, but I should continue on to use the right. So in class three, at least first, second term, I was 21st, and the third term I was 18th then I could move up flow with the class so class four I realized I have picked up interestingly I was somebody who struggled through examination why I don't know why I don't know I write exams that I fail and my teachers will ask me why because they know I shouldn't fail so for comma I did comma in about three times hmm. Yeah, that was me. Were you discouraged at that time, or even the uh, fact that they were forcing you to use the wrong hand? Did it have I any influence I don't know whether that confidence? was that. But thank God I had brothers. And my father is somebody who kept all his children together. together. And my mother was a receptive mother type. So you wouldn't know who is a half sibling and who is a full sibling. So I remember one of my brothers. I, I was about to send him uh, the notice of me being here, but then just before I was doing that, then I was asked to come on stage. Brock Kwame. Brock Kwame said, no, 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 no. Ama, I think there's something wrong with your exam, but I know you are not daft. So he held my hand to see the headmaster at Benkum Secondary. Then he is of uh, blessed memory. Uh, had Master Chum dancer. So then I went to Benkum Form 1 in 1986. So 19, sorry, 1982, 81, I was in Benkum, I completed 86. I went to Benkum Secondary. Throughout my five years, if you want anybody to rank students first 20, you can't say that I wouldn't be there. I completed Form 5. Again, I had some remedials to write. But let me say again that I had brothers who were so dear to me. They won't let me fall back. 
But how did you feel seeing that your brothers were ahead of you? You were not matching up to the other kids in school. But I was their, ki their kid sister. I was their baby. Everybody. When I was a child, I was very adoring. So my brothers loved me. They cherished me. But they didn't and, want to be first. And they didn't want the gap. Mm -hmm. So no matter what happened, they say, hey, 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 you can fall back. And I remember one of my brothers will say that, hey, you, you want to tell your people that my brother is this, my brother is that. You also want to say our sister is this, our sister is that. So at a point, I could still go through A levels, but still English language, I did not have six. Hmm. So then, at that time, without English language six, you cannot get to the nursing training. You cannot get to the teacher's training. You cannot get to the university. So even with your A-level, there's nowhere you, go. you could go. So there was a friend of mine that was a year I wrote again. And with this remedies I'm talking about, I was writing June, November, June, November, June, November. It's not that... How many I, years? Uh, to get through all levels, I think I wrote minimum three years. Wow. And the English language, it was seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, What was it nine. about the English language that you were struggling I with? I don't know. <laughs> so there was a year, I think that was, there was a year I wrote it. I told myself I'm writing for the last time. Mm -hmm. And it was a disaster. Oh. So. <laughs> so you said this is the last I told time. myself, my brother, <laughs> I'll live with one of my brothers. He's now in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So when the results came, I didn't do well. But there was a strength. And any time I write an exam and the results are by a week or two to be released, I'll have a dream. Mm -hmm. Or the same dream. And those dreams, I'll see a lot of people traveling. When I'm about to board the vehicle, the driver will speed off. Wow. The last one, I remember, I held the vehicle. Everybody in the vehicle was screaming to the driver to wait for me. He did not. Wow. So before the results will come, I will know it's a disaster. So my brother will say, hey, won't you go and see, check your results? I'll relax for, because I know. You already know. <laughs> but I wouldn't share with anybody. So there was a year that was 91. Yes, 91. I said I won't do it again. Wow. How old were you then? I should be 22. 22. Around that. Okay. I said I won't write again. Then my brother was angry. He said that, look at you. I'm paying. I'm not discouraged. I'm paying you, not passing. I'm not angry at you. And you look at my face and tell me you won't do it again. So he sent me to one of my brothers. I don't know, maybe I think they had spoken. So everybody, nobody will encourage me. But then I wasn't, per my nature, I'm not a rebellious type. Mm -hmm. And these brothers, they are 10, 9 and a half, 10, 14 years older than mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. And I wasn't a rebellious type. So even that one, for this time, I decided to rebel because I was fed up. And I, there was a friend of mine, he was at KNUST. I was living in Chakwa then. So, and all these years, my brother didn't want to stay at home. The service, national service coordinator, regional coordinator was his friend. Mm -hmm. So I did my service about three years because you, <laughs> you have time to study. <laughs> you stay home, you'll be ideal. So that doing service and teaching, at least you take it closer to books. So I had closed from school and this friend of mine, they were living in a story building. In front of their house was a footpath. Mm -hmm. So when he saw me, he screamed, hi, give you hi. So okay. I said, no, 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 wait for me. Then he picked his shirt around his neck. I said, no, that is not you. Why? No smiles, nothing, so cold. So he took me to a spot in Tapa. He called that spot downstairs. I think I'm right. He sat there. He bought a bottle of uh, Malta Guinness. For. I remember very well. He said, what is it? I said, there was also gay. He said, what is it? I said, nothing. I said, no, there's something. He said, there was I said, yes. What I do is I don't do the gossip. Read my lips. Don't be stupid. Read my lips again. Wow. I said, why? I won't do it again. No, 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 no. No, you will do it. That 
that weekend was the last day for registration. Uh -huh. My brother had traveled. So if you were to get money to register, I did not have it. So my friend said, that, no, 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 you do everything. You register today, 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 today. But what did your friend succeed at doing that your brothers didn't succeed at? Because two brothers talked to you to do it again. You I did felt... it. Was it the Malta Guinness? No. <laughs> I felt, he said that, look, don't begin to feel you are stupid. You are not. Were you feeling that way? I felt that there's no way out for me. So you were going to give up? You have to change. The, the issue is exams, exams, exams. You're not breaking through. Think of something else. And in reality, there's no way I could look at because I can't go to teacher training because I didn't have my, uh, English language six. I couldn't go to nursing so training. So what were you going to do if you decided to not continue I'll, the exam? I'll, 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 can't you be fed up in life? But you didn't even have a plan B. I told my brother that... It's different I, if you said I would be I a hairdresser or a I think, I, think, I, think I just had to go and marry. My brother said, really? hey, are you okay? <laughs> I said, but... Then my brother said that the most unreliable institution in life is marriage. marriage. He had a friend that had a wonderful fiancé. They married for three years. It was a disaster. Wow. So he told me, look at this friend of mine. So no, Omar, you can't do that. So my friends said, I don't begin to feel you're an idiot. Maybe if I had not passed, I wouldn't have had the strength and the moral life to lead the way you're doing. Yeah. So do it the last time. Let's have a deal. Every week I write you a letter, you reply. You write me a reply. Let that be, just be your, the English uh, uh, you're lessons you study and then few other things. So I went to, I called a friend of mine then her father, she was Efua Sabayana Mensa. Mm -hmm. Now she's Sabayana Jan. Mm -hmm. The father was the district secretary then. You know, it was PNDC time. Mm -hmm. So she spoke with the father. The father gave me money to register. I Aww. told him, if you give me money to register, my brother had travels. So, what so you take it back and I'll take it back. So I did that. Maybe because the money wasn't from my brother. And this time, for the f this time I had my sex. And I went to University of Cape Coast. Wow. So uh, why am I saying this? There are a lot of young people out there. The resilience is not there. The persistence is not there. So realize that so much of us is getting into the dream. And because we easily get fed up and we don't have people to encourage us or support us, we end up accepting anything at all. Sometimes I see young ladies in traffic and I ask myself, what went wrong? They are pretty, you realize they are intelligent, what went wrong? So these are the issues a young person could go through. Whether the fail of exam is physical or spiritual, at least with persistence and a lot of resilience, those is where I find myself. Wow. So it seems as though your teenage years were not very exciting, or your early 20s were also not that exciting, because ah, you were fixating on passing this exam. It wasn't, it's not very exciting. But then there were also exciting parts. What were some fun parts? You know, from childhood, I've always been a leader. Hmm. At the middle school, as a assistant guest prefect. I'd been Kum Secondary School, I was the assistant guest prefect. At the sixth form at Takwa Secondary School, I was the assistant guest prefect. I got to University of Cape Coast. I, by the second semester, I was the SRC rep for wow. my whole. Nice. How did you find university education versus your primary and secondary? My brothers always used to tell me that if you go through education, you don't get to university, you have missed out big time. Oh, so those were some of the things they were telling me. And let me say that when I got to university, they let me feel good. Hmm. My brothers, they, they visit me almost every other week. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the young men thought they were my sugar daddies or something. <laughs> but they were, the age gap was wide, and they, they always treat me a kiss sister, even now. I live with my brother. Sister. You're joking. I live with my brother. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he said... You know, when I go to Accra, the areas I wanted to rent a, a place or buy a place, he said that. I was in Accra in 1962. Beyond Motorway wasn't part of Accra. 
beyond circle wasn't part of Accra. He could mention a lot of areas for me. He said, that, but you know what? I live on this house alone. Let's live here. Aww. If we find some property within the vicinity where you use maximum 30 minutes, about 15 minutes to the airport, about 30 minutes to your office, so that you always find yourself within, irrespective of what kind of stress you go through. Other than that, you wouldn't have any livelihood in Accra. It would yeah. be traffic, traffic, traffic. So I live with my brother. Wow. I've always been treated like a kid sister. And do you like being the kid sister? But the issue is, you are the last one. What else can you do? Okay. There's nothing you could do. Okay, so uh, what skills did you gain from your university experience that influenced your job now as, as a member of parliament? University, I was the vice president of alcohol. And you know, there you had to manage colleagues. Mm -hmm. In the secondary school, when you were a school prefect, you have genius to control. Mm -hmm. So you just have to appear a lot of fearful. <laughs> and then when I was in the secondary school and I was a prefect, you respect me or you fear me. You can't take me for granted. Mm -hmm. No. So those who accept respecting me, it was cool. We were friends. But if you want to prove you are hard, I'll show you where power lies. But how do you do that? How did you go from the meek little girl to someone who wants to show people where power lies? No. And the one thing was, I've never been a bully. Mm. And I make sure the right thing is done. Since childhood until now, anything that I've suffered from I didn't like, I've never treated anybody like that. Yeah. By the grace of God, I've never done that. And that is what I use to benchmark my own behavior. If I didn't like it, and even at this age, I realized that it didn't help me in any way. I don't repeat that. I, will be in, I was a teacher for about 20 years. Hmm. And the things I didn't like my teacher, my teachers doing them, I never did them. How was that experience? One thing, you know, I was a science student. One thing I didn't like about teachers was, one is about a week to an exam. They will hurriedly, some of them will hurriedly teach something. They know they're not even a single of that thing in their exam. Why? I saw that to be deceit. Yeah. And I hate de deception. So when I, be when I became a teacher, you know, you have syllabus to complete. And it's continuous. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I rush to class, a week before revision week, or even do revision week, I could tell my students, this, and usually my last topics do not come in section B. Okay. My last topics will come only in section A. Hmm. Because I think that you don't teach students anything less than a week and examine him or her on that. Yeah. That, is, that is my own uh, uh, principle. So when I'm teaching something, the very last week, I will tell you, look, I've even finished setting the questions, or I haven't set it, but with this topic, maximum sure. five objectives. I will tell you. What did you like about teaching? Teaching, the most fantastic <coughs> profession you can ever have. How so? Uh, let me go back and say that. When I was in the University of Cape Coast, I used to tell my friends that when I complete the University of Cape Coast, at, at that time, you have a degree and you have a diploma in education. Mm -hmm. So everybody comes out as a professional teacher. Sure. I was telling my friends that my first 10 years, I'll be in the classroom. At least in my first 10 years, I'll be in the classroom. The reason being that I have time for my children, I have time for myself, I have time for my home. So first 10 years, I'll be in the classroom. And then, fortunately for me, after three years, I moved from uh, Sunyani Secondary School to VRA schools. Mm -hmm. There, everything is perfect, almost perfect. Condition of service, wonderful. People you meet around, and the school was such that you have the opportunity to teach from primary school to SHS. So you have, 
real influence to making the school. And I had soft spots for children or students who have some difficulty or the other. The difficulty could be some superiority complex you think you have. Or learning or, disability. Or real issues that you have. So my students were my friends. I treated my students just like my own children, if not better. Because my, my children used to tell me that I treat other children better even than they themselves. Aww. Because it's for you, I don't have any extra questions to answer. But for other person's child, I have extra questions to answer, physically or spiritually. Yeah. So for my students, the student could walk to me, me uh, uh, Sunyani students were calling me Miss Gifty. Of course, of all primary schools were calling me Miss Chumampof. And then the secondary school, they were calling me Miss Chum. I said, you see, you adolescent, laziness. You cannot pronounce a simple compound name. But then whatever you do, they call you Miss Chumampof. They call Miss Chum. And sometimes they hide and scream, Miss Chum. <laughs> then I know who is who's calling me. Calling you see, a teacher is someone that destinies are give, have been given to to turn around the destinies to a positive direction. And I enjoy doing that. When the student has some difficulty, I'll get closer to know what the diffi difficulties are. Some of them, the issues are from home. Either parents are breaking up or some financial constraints. And I always get closer to my students to know what they're going through. So a lot of students will say, I miss you. My mother didn't leave me with you, but I want to be your ward. Wow. You are my guardian. So I'm automatically your guardian. Once you have worked to me, that's OK. So I had a lot of them. And usually, once a month, if not doing well at all, twice a term, I'll pick a weekend, cook for about 50 children, 50 students. They'll come with their friends. I pass out some for others who are unable to come. They were my friends. How did you make the transition from teaching to public service? That is, a friend of mine said, <laughs> wonders will never end. <laughs> Give you a in partisan politics. Even though I've always been a politician. Really? What about politics intrigued you? No, but life is full of politics. Mm -hmm. Life is full of politics. We eat, we drink, we wear, we breathe. Everything. But in our context, some people feel as though politics can be a bit aggressive. People focus on the personality as opposed to the policy, especially being a woman. So naturally, people might like politics, but they would not even venture there. What, what drove you that direction? Uh, let me see that. Uh, 2000 and I've always been a politician. Mm -hmm. I always had passion, soft spot for MPP. And why did I become an MPP? When I explain you love. 1992. Again, with this examination I'm talking about. <laughs> the, I had my biology, I had my, but I didn't have physics. Mm -hmm. So a teacher of mine at Takwa Secondary School met me in Takwa and said, Gifty, UCC is doing some with media. I am your teacher, I know you are good. Why didn't you pass my subject? I, don't I have no idea. <laughs> so go for the remedial program. So I went for the remedial program. That was the time that ban had been lifted from partisan politics. Mm -hmm. And NDC had Congress in, at the University of Cape Coast. That day, the day we were having the final Congress, that day I was writing thesis. That was my last paper in the remedial program. So I said, ah, why are they making so much noise? And he realized the way they were abusing facilities there. And I said, ah, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to belong to this party. And imagine I was writing physics. I was mm -hmm. so careful. Yeah. But interestingly, one hour I had finished with the practical, the head of the department then, Dr. Basua, he's now a professor. He came, looked at my figures, and went through my experiment. The figures were so perfect, he thought somebody was giving me the figures. Wow. So when he finished, 
He looked at my face and he smiled. He said, that, Will you do that to this? He said, mm -mm -mm. He said, No. They said, Okay, you say, it's okay. So at that time, I said that I just don't like NDC, the way they behave at the University <laughs> of Cape So the question is, which party should I belong? And then I saw, you know, I'd been in the University of Cape for six weeks. Mm -hmm. So I, did, I just, like, didn't know what was going outside. And I was thinking about myself because I had my own problems. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came, I said, then I saw, I went to the salon the next day, I saw MPP poster with uh, Professor Dubohan. Mm -hmm. And the motto of development in freedom. I said, I think I like this part. That's so nobody, that's nobody influenced me. On. I influenced myself. Nobody. Okay. And then I realized that a lot of my friends, the early that I respected so much, it just happened that they were all MPP mm -hmm. people. But they knew why they were in For me, I didn't know. Why did you decide to become an MP? The MP, for many years, we were, my husband and myself, we were so supported political activities, I, I would say behind closed doors, mm -hmm. that we wouldn't know we were doing that. In 2012, when MPP lost the elections, let me say that my heart was broken. Together with my children, I couldn't eat. I said, hey, why? So I was praying, I was trying to pray in the morning. I'm somebody, I eat prayer, I drink prayer, I, I, everything I do is about prayer. Everything of my life is prayer. And then when I was praying, then I heard a voice telling me that. You see, the, even the way you are suffering, have you thought of a kufuado? So from that day, when I woke up, I called my children, it's been my second girl, She's, she was more political than myself. And then I said that, let's, let's take a Methodist hymn and sing and also thank God for the results. Say, mommy, pa, dear. And then the hymn God gave me was MHB 80. Thee we will praise with all our hearts and tell my kind how great thou art, how marvelous. My, my daughter said, ah, mommy, what is marvelous about this? And then one of the stanza said that those who sow in tears shall definitely harvest in joy. Wow. But when you go to that standard, then it got into my spirit. And from that day, this is the first time I'm saying this in public, that from that day, I've never ceased praying for Nana Adodan Kwekufad. I pray for him every day. And then in 2016, January, I don't normally make a lot of resolutions. I don't do. The only resolutions I make in life is, I had to stay right with Christ. And I know all other things shall be added. So when I was praying, and I usually pray very well, do a lot of worship in the bathroom if there's no pressure on me. And the voice came and said that, you will be part of the next government. It means at January 2016, God told me, Nanadu will win. Because God told me that you will be part of the next government. And then anytime I ask, I ask myself, am I going to be a deputy minister or, an, or a DC? I hear a voice telling me that. When you live a right with me, I'll make sure you are glorified. So when the unfortunate situation happened, the bosom murder of my predecessor, the very morning when you were going to school, my second daughter said, Mommy, why not going for this seat? Then my firstborn said, Oh, I drew her. It has happened just today. For that, you know, it's not even true. I said, well, I wish true. Because all the prominent radio stations or media houses have, have announced them. If it were not true, some of the, then she listed some of the media houses. They wouldn't have announced that. They would have kept quiet. So it's too early. Let's see what will happen. And then, after 2012 also, we had a group in Akosomo. Initially, it was VRA Caucus, and then it shifted to uh, Akosomo Caucus. We were raising funds, voluntary contribution, big time voluntary contribution, to support a uh, campaign agenda for MPP and others. Our uh, general manager then was a strong NDC. I'm the only person who can pull out MPP umbrella when it's raining and walk through the school. I don't care. 
I have an umbrella. It's my umbrella. And umbrella is an umbrella. People said, hey, you can use this umbrella. I so said, I'm okay with that. So when my daughter said that, four days later, my husband said that, with all the monies you spend in politics, you intend to be in politics, all the people who are interested in this seat, they are younger than yourself. So if you want to be in party politics, then the time is now. So no, let me, let me, let me do I said the time is now. Take a decision within one week and let's take a decision. Wow. So again, I went somewhere pray about that. Then I had a green light. So that's how come I got into party politics. Thank you. On that note, myself. we have gone over time. Honorable <laughs> 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 Gifty Chum Ampop, it's been such a pleasure having you with us. And my key takeaways are uh, uh, be prayerful. Family is very, very important. So she started off with her brothers and ended with her children and her husband influencing the stage of her life now. And work hard, be resilient, right? You're going to feel many, many times, but the most important thing is to not be defeated. I thank you so much, Honorable, for spending your word with us. <laughs> and thank you at home for staying with us. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive Breakfast Daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment, and share with your friends.